Hi friends, I'm Sarah from Dandelion Seeds Positive Parenting and I have another real life example of how to use playful parenting. Here is how to use playful parenting in conflict. Conflict, what that sounds like a terrible time to use playful parenting. Well, sometimes it can be, but there are also times when it can work really, really effectively. Let me share an example from yesterday. So yesterday, my husband, my daughter and I, and as a reminder, my daughter is seven years old. My husband, my daughter and I went for a really long walk about two miles each way with the destination point of an ice cream shop at the end. Um, so we got home everybody was happy we had bellies full of ice cream I came inside through our garage my husband was bringing something into the garage everybody was happy well he went into the garage with this box that he was carrying and while he was in there apparently some empty boxes tumbled over onto him and made him understandably frustrated and annoyed. Nobody likes having a pile of boxes fall on them, right? Well, my daughter heard the commotion and she went out to see what was going on and see if she could help in any way. So next thing you know, I hear them arguing. I hear them yelling at each other in the garage. And I thought, oh my goodness, well, I thought we were in ice cream land. I thought life was happy and wonderful right now. What in the world just happened in the garage? So I will spare you the details of that, but she came back inside super upset. He came back inside super upset. So obviously I was just an innocent bystander. I was not even part of it. So I thought, okay, he is an adult. He's gonna take care of himself for a little while. I am going to co-regulate with her and see if I can get her back to a better state of peacefulness within herself before we can problem solve together as a family. I need to note also that it was fairly late in the day at this point. The seven-year-old had just been on a four-mile walk. She had kind of probably started crashing from the sugar high that the ice cream offered. It was not too long before dinner time, so she was probably getting hungry for actual dinner. And I realized now is not the time to get into problem solving and adult conversation and all that business. So my husband came in and said, I think we need to talk about this. And I said, yes, we do at dinner time. And everybody agreed, yes, we can table this, we can wait until dinner time when everybody's a little bit more regulated, we have some food in our systems and then we can problem solve. Now herein is where the playful parenting came into play. So we were about halfway through dinner, so everybody was feeling pretty happy again. And I thought, hmm, sounds like things really went sideways earlier today. I don't wanna just let that go. I don't wanna pretend it never happened because nobody learns from not discussing things. So I brought it up. I said, I noticed that there was a big, a big something in the garage earlier today. Well, first of all, my daughter thought it was funny that I called it a and she agreed and she replicated the sound and we all agreed as a family that that's what it was. And from there, I said, forgive me here, I said, now we are going to talk about this problem, but we must do it in our very best Italian accent. I realize I have a terrible Italian accent. And for my Italian friends who are watching, please feel free to reciprocate with an American accent. No offense intended. However, suddenly I had my child's interest in talking about a conflict. Now, I don't know how it is in your house, but in my house, my child does not enjoy talking about hard things. That's a very adult thing in her mind. So I need to find some way to make it emotionally safe to keep it light enough that we can still talk about what we need to talk about. But we can make it feel 
a little bit more enjoyable in the process. So I said, number one, I will come up with the rules for the conversation and rule number one is we must speak in this Italian accent. I will also share rules four and five with you. I will not tell you rules two and three because they are a surprise, they are a mystery. And of course that got my child laughing even more, even kind of got my husband to smirk. And he said, I don't know about this. I really like to know what the rules are, but I, I can't tell you yet because I haven't made them up yet. I'm going to know that I need a rule when it comes up. So long story short, solving the problem, getting to the root cause, talking about the feelings behind the root cause, sharing everybody's perspective, took an entire hour. There was a lot to discuss. There was some pain on my child's part. There was some aggravation on my husband's part, and they had a lot to work through. But we did it in a goofy accent, not that I'm calling an Italian accent goofy, our version of it is goofy, but we did it in this accent. We did it with the occasional silly or whatever else we did to try to lighten the mood. I made sure to call on people to take turns sharing perspective. One of my rules was that everybody had to use I statements rather than you statements, the accusatory ones. For example, I felt sad when, things like that, rather than you were so rude. So I made sure that we followed the rules for effective problem solving. And I can tell you that never in a million years would my seven-year-old be okay with that same exact conversation, practically word for word, if I did it in my normal voice. So adding an accent, adding a little playfulness, even around a really tricky topic, made it much more palatable and peaceful. And by the end of the conversation, we had full resolution and a path forward for how they can both handle it more peacefully next time it comes up. So introduce play, introduce accents, introduce creative ways to problem solve, to keep your kids engagement, and you will have much greater success at working alongside them. Hope this helps and I will see you again soon.